Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. It's your girl, Two Bees. <laughs> <laughs> live in the stool with the gang. <laughs> it's your boy, Will. Live in the stool with the gang and somebody that has a birthday today. Or Ooh. tomorrow. Whoever would that be? Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. about me <laughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to another edition of stay busy with armand sather where we normally have responsible discussions <laughs> on the entertainment business and the entertainment culture but like my lovely co-hosts have just said my birthday is in just a few hours we are ready to get active cheers everybody cheers 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 cheers, cheers. cheers. <sighs> i'm my a lightweight y'all what happened? I'm a lightweight. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Well, God's go. uh, I am <clears throat> Armand Sather, a.k.a. Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, Chine Du, the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks and not tell a lie. I'm here with the gang, of course. It's your girl, 2Bs, you know, representing Flatbush. I'm outside. What's popping? <laughs> it's your boy, Will, representing Harlem. <laughs> I'm outside. No, represent what you represent. Okay, well. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I represent Harlem. <laughs> Transplant <laughs> beef never dies. Never <laughs> dies. Um, but of course, thank you to all of you listeners uh, for tuning back in. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel or your favorite audio streaming platform for all of our episodes. Like, comment, share with a friend, all that good stuff. Patreon, the podcast only fans. Hit patreon.com backslash stay busy pod for all of our fun unfiltered content we have a new episode which should be out now where we all got into our hater bags and talked about artists that everybody hypes up that we may not like so much i have a hot take on there that i got judged for but um you know hey yeah <laughs> we will we, we feel how we feel you know that's it um so whether you like of course birthday dinners or birthday brunches Intimate birthday gatherings or large birthday functions, birthday story posts or meaningful text messages, an international birthday trip, or staying domestic. So, are y'all birthday brunch or birthday dinner people? I'm a birthday brunch girly. Okay. Yeah, you know, get lit, get home by 11 p.m. Yes. Well, me and my friends, we ain't going home. We going to another party after <laughs> that. But yeah, it's, I I prefer brunch. Mm -hmm. I'm a birthday dinner guy. Okay. Um. I'm a birthday dinner guy. I feel like you could just lead it up the whole day. Especially, you know, one time my girlfriend, she threw me a surprise party at night, a birthday dinner, and it was so kind of, it was just, it just blew my mind. After that, I was like, I'm a birthday dinner, surprise birthdays, all that type of stuff. I like that shit. Yeah, celebrating yourself is dope. It yeah. is. I, I like brunches. I like daytime events. I'm not, not a night event guy. Like, mm. I don't know. I hate when shit, like, starts late. I hate 4 a.m. evenings, being out all night, the expensive ass Ubers home, all that. Mm. So let's get lit during the day. Mm. Let's get home early. I like. I, I, like I feel you, bro. Because the older the you know the older you get, the more of those late nights they really start to add up, and not just like wow. add up like just like on you, like add up in your pockets too. Yeah. Like like no joke. Like the late night Uber, especially in New York City, boy, hell. That's why I bought a car. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it no boy. more. Boy, yeah. make yeah. you want a boy. Now, do y'all like small, bir intimate birthday gatherings, or you try to turn up with a lot of people? Um, I'm a girl, so my birthday lasts at least a week, <laughs> and that's like includes a combination of intimate things, you know, mixy things. One on one time, family time, traveling like we got to celebrate my birthday the whole time. Yeah. You know, you got to see me saying "fuck everybody" a week before my birthday. <laughs> like it's a ritual. Niggas don't <laughs> fuck with me like that. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like. I like intimate, small, small, small gatherings. You know, um, I feel like, especially like the field we work in, I feel like we're around a lot of people all the all time. Those, yeah. So whenever we get a chance to do some like cool intimate stuff, like with your like real friends, not just like business acquaintances or like people you just see out, 
and you can do some real stuff, some real like intimate, cool stuff with like your homies. Mm -hmm. I like that type of stuff. I feel that. Yeah. I like that more. I've gotten obviously gotten into my party throwing bag over the years. Um, so I like large things. I, I like bringing people from different walks of life or walks of my life together. Like my homegirl from high school pulled up to my party. Don't you love that? Yeah, she came out, came with the camera. She's taking pics of everyone. Like That's I, tight. I, I see her taking selfies with people she just met. And I was like, I, I just love like you know, bringing people together, mm -hmm. and building relationships. So I, I like a large function. Um, I feel like this one's pretty easy, but I'm going to say it anyways. A story post or a meaningful text message? Text me. Mm -hmm. And don't ask me to post you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah um text me yeah text actually me. i'm sorry call me call you okay call that's, me that's better, i need to yeah. hear your voice mm. yeah it's better like if we have a certain like level like if, if we're close enough i need to hear your voice or else like you didn't really wish me happy birthday mm. or if you even post it before i hear from you it's like what what is this a performance <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> story posts are cool i i i, I like don't be resharing them anymore because mm. like i don't want my story to look like a fucking powerpoint presentation Facts. Um, meta and, just changed the algorithm really yeah wait what does it do now so i don't know if you guys realize on instagram when it's someone's birthday their story is prioritized so if you've noticed people like within the past three weeks who um celebrated a birthday recently even if you haven't seen them on your feed in a while they are pushed up to the top. Basically, Instagram's a new Facebook. Interesting. Wow. I didn't realize that. But I yeah, if you, that. you would notice, like, there are people who I, I didn't even know I still followed, mm. and they will appear on my story, like, as it's going because it's their birthday and Meta's pushing them up. No, that's crazy because recently, recently I had, I feel like people do this all the time, but recently I had, like, that thought, like, damn, is it everybody's birthday? <laughs> no, Meta, and, Meta changed and the now, algorithm. And now it makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So now Damn. you don't have to worry about getting shadow banned. You would actually get a boost if you do share it. And then since we're gonna be promoting the pun, <laughs> yeah, social media manager here, I, I unofficially take the role. Okay, good to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, fire. but That's text, I, I like text too. Texts definitely uh, mean the most, especially like people you people you haven't heard from in a minute who go out of their way to text on your birthday. I, I love that. It means a lot. Yeah. Um, and lastly. You going international or you going somewhere domestic if you're taking a trip for your birthday? I've actually never taken a birthday trip before. I think next year for 30, I'm going I'm to do a party and I'm going to leave after. Wait, you're not 30? No, I'm turning 29. Oh. <laughs> Thought I was the youngest nigga here. <laughs> no. Well, okay. <laughs> but what Kaylani said, I don't want Miami. I want Medellin. Mm -hmm. I do love Miami, though. I do love Miami too, I'll, I'll never <laughs> and my dad's Miami. Colombian. But if I would have to choose, I'm definitely using my passport. Yeah, um, passport, passport. I like to for my. I think for my thirtieth, we went to uh, Saint Martin, mm. and it was nice. It was, cool. it was cool. It's a nice little trip, and it's one of those places like. It's not Tulum, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to go to like, everybody wants to go to it's the same Turks, place. Yeah, it's it's like, yeah, it was cool. It was different. It was like, but it was still nice. I felt like just like those places. Maybe not just the same, but mm -hmm. it was cool. I liked it. <laughs> All right. Wait, try. before we move on to the birthday thing, because you both are guys and you guys seem like stand up gentlemen, you know, <laughs> might be reading it wrong, but that's what I get. <laughs> mm -hmm. If your girl's birthday come up, right? Mm -hmm. And she's having a birthday dinner. Mm -hmm. Are y'all gonna cover the whole bill? The whole bill? Because um, I had a conversation like that recently with a friend. The entire bill, like all the guests too. Yeah. yeah. yeah she said whole bill. No. No. Um, fuck no. So it's just, you just gonna pay for you and your girl? Said cover fuck no. Bill. Holy shit. Um, well, what you doing? <sighs> you better pay for the whole thing. I low key want to. You should. I want to pay for the whole thing. I know, Armand, you're shaking your head at me. And I know. No, well, you should. It's, it's all good. No, I, I, I low-key want to, but, like, it, I feel like it depends on the birthday, too, though. Like, I don't know. If it's, like, a big birth, like, I don't know. It has to be a big birthday. Like, it has to be, like, a 30 or, like, A milestone? A, it has to be a milestone, I feel like. And then it... Uh, it's too many variables for me. I feel like it... <laughs> are, we like, talking, are we talking about an intimate party? Like, how many people? Because... Yeah, like, 
I do. That would be yeah. I want to cover it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Especially if I'm up. Like fuck it. We yeah. up. Like we. You know. It's your you know birthday. the friends gonna be like, oh my god, your mm-hmm. man is so nice. Fuck that. I don't need their approval. See? Fuck that. <laughs> you don't, but it helps. It does. Fuck them. That's the congregation. Yeah. Gangsta. Yeah, you're right. Let's jump into this chat. A lot uh, going on. So some unfortunate news. Florida rapper Fulio. Um, was killed on his 26th birthday. Um, he was throwing an Airbnb function, and then he moved it to the Holiday Inn because he exceeded the occupancy. They haven't arrested any suspects uh, at the time of us reporting this. Um, and then he was beefing with uh, Youngin Ace. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> okay, Unk. Youngin Ace. Youngin Ace. I'm, I'm going to just assume it's Youngin Ace. Youngin uh, Drew dropped a diss track called Do It hours after the, the nigga died. Like, literally dancing on his grave. So. He ain't even buried. Right, exactly, yeah. Like, d- didn't even let the body get cold. Like, he's, he's nuts. He's nuts. But that happened. Um, definitely rest in peace to him. Um, condolences to, you know, all of his family and loved ones. Um, but, yeah, dying on your birthday. It's shitty. That's a rough look. Imagine yeah. the tombstone. Yeah, that's... That sucks. But nothing comes good. Nothing good comes out of like dissing your ops in the song. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know who did it before Tupac, but you notice that everyone who did it during that time is not breathing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, energy is like a boomerang. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to be responsible for the energy you put out because it will come back. And, um, I really wish that there was just more tasteful way to do it. Like, I wish that, you know, the rappers would stop dedicating whole songs to their ops and just, you know, do a little one-two line, make it the best line in the song, you know, make the whole world want to sing along to it and call it a day. But it's just like, I really don't be understanding, like, what's the goal here? But they from Florida, so the expectations are low. Florida niggas are different. (laughs) That was crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's not it's not really a laughing matter, but <clears throat> at the same time, you know, it's really hard. It's not really hard, actually, because you know we get it. We we definitely get it. But it's really hard to for some people to really understand how serious like this rap shit can get. Especially if you in that, if you in that world of of dissing and, and and doing things like, like that, um, like Miss Two B's just said, you know, it, she wished it could be a little bit more tasteful, like three, or, like maybe a few lines or like a verse or this and that. It, it, it bro, like you know, we live in New York City. The Bronx, the Bronx drill shit, the drill shit here, how disrespectful it got. It, it got so, bro. I'm talking Cousins about disrespectful, bro. <laughs> I'm talking about. If you know how you walk, you might walk through a neighborhood and they got the they got the candles set up and all the glasses. Somebody passed. I'm talking about people are going around kicking those down and breaking those and doing okay. stuff like that. It's like, Type you know, it's, and you, it's just it's, it, it can get it can get real crazy and real disrespectful. And you don't know what somebody will do to you when you disrespect them. Oh, you, you niggas is crazy, bro. You don't know what niggas might do. Niggas might shoot up your house. Shoot, you know, it's a you don't know, bro. You don't you just don't know. They might shoot up your granny's house. Niggas don't, bro. Niggas have no bounds of what they can and will do to get back at some disrespect. Cause you know, this is a game that breeds egos. Mm-hmm. And psh, these egos can get bred to the highest and tenth degree. Mm-hmm. And once they get disrespected. Oh, you you gonna just, especially with the internet now. Everybody's watching. Oh, you gonna let them disrespect you? Yeah. Like we even like you know uh, we're talking about it. Like, and it's just I don't know, bro. It's kind of crazy, bro. Yeah. It's kind of crazy when yeah. you really think about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely mm-hmm. is. I mean, you know, I think people get so entertained by beef and the negativity and all that, and they don't think about the real life implications. Like, people were. <sighs> I hate to keep going back to this, but the drinking Kendrick shit, like, mm-hmm. yeah, and you know, like, we weekend's manager, security guard got shot, and mm-hmm. the dude got shot outside of Drake's crib, and it was like that was a lie, and like we we don't know if these things are connected, but like you know, the, these things do happen, and mm-hmm. so you know, as entertaining as negativity can be, it's always I always got to have like a little like pause or apprehension in 
celebrating it too much because people love that shit bro yeah. like they really people like really sit around and watch especially like all these you know and this is a deeper kind of crazy conversation but, like all these these youtubes channels that just sit down and, and break down hella black crimes and, and rap and trying to tie this and that and blah 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 like i remember how crazy it was when when Vaughn died and, and and the beef with with Dirk and and, and, and Young Boy and all that crap, like bro, people live and die with this shit. While real people are living and dying with this shit, mm -hmm. and that's what's that's what gets crazy about it for me. <clears throat> it just seems so like I feel desensitized to the shit. Yeah, like it's almost commercialized. Yo, because mm -hmm. we saw Vaughn's body. <sighs> We saw XX Tentacion's mm -hmm. lifeless body. We saw mm -hmm. Nipsey's body. Like it's just you haven't seen you haven't seen Fulio's face. Damn, they they lit him up, bro. He doesn't have a face. Mm. Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm. Rest in peace to him. Yeah, yeah prayers up to his family. Yeah, for real. Absolutely. Yeah, don't don't look at that if y'all haven't. Don't. You know, I know people still will search it, but don't because it's not pretty. Let's move into some positivity. <laughs> um. The 2024 Double XL freshman class was revealed. Mm -hmm. The names are Lay Banks, Maya the Don, Big X the Plug, Huncho, Skilla Baby, Cash Cobain, that Mexican OT, Rich Amiri, Boss Man D Lo, Four Bats, and Scar Lip. Congrats to all of them. Of course, special shout out to Cash Cobain uh, and Will and the team over there. Okay. Love you, guys. It's a lot to celebrate today. Appreciate Big Swizzy Summer, we here. Appreciate you guys. Um, how, how, how do y'all feel about the 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 freshman cover overall and the and the selections? I've I've got some thoughts, but I want y'all to. I'm like, well, you kick first. it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought it was pretty decent, bro. I yeah. think it was pretty decent. Um, you know, Cash was on there, obviously, and we're happy and excited and thankful and all that. Shout out to the team. Shout out to Mokta. Shout out to Glenn Brown. Shout out to um, Daniel. Shout out to uh, my boy Seamus. Um, shout out to Sam. Yeah. Um, Got to shout out the team right there. That felt good. That <laughs> felt good to shout the team for a win like this. Yeah. Uh, I just had like a moment real quick. But <laughs> yeah, I thought, you know, I thought it was cool, bro. I thought I thought it was decent with. Um, I like Skillet on there. I like. I like uh, BX, BX the plug, the, the Texas guy. Yeah, shout out to you, not a mm -hmm, masters. Mm -hmm, my gosh, my mm -hmm, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I like Lay Banks a lot. Same. I like Lay Banks a lot. Rooting for, for her. Yeah, exactly. Like, same. Yeah. She calls, she's like responsible for a whole cultural shift that she does not get credited for. And I love to see her having her moment right now. So, yeah. Yes. So I like, I like Lay Banks a lot. Who else is on there? Oh, uh, Bossman, of course. Mm -hmm. I think Bossman D Lo, he has the most. IG quotable lines <laughs> since he's going crazy. I I, I, uh, he just dropped a, tr a track. I forget what it was called, but um, I really like Sports Center. I think yeah, I really yeah. The video, the video's crazy. Yeah. Like the yeah, he was yeah, yeah, bro. His references and sports ref like he just goes crazy. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was a pretty decent cover, man. And I seen last thing I seen a tweet. Uh, somebody said, uh, um, you don't get no props working in like entertainment media saying you don't know who the double x is. Yeah, i put that yeah. on your timeline i retweeted yeah. it yeah thank you uh, kathy, kathy kathy because that. that's yeah. true because like, you don't like, yeah. like who like, are like who do you think you are yeah it's like, not something to act too to cool. brag yeah. about like, like, i don't know if <laughs> any i don't know any people get another job yeah because like when my friends like you know i still hang out with my real friends majority of the time like i don't do industry shit a lot anymore mm. Mm -hmm. so I'm with my real friends a lot and mm -hmm. they don't know a lot of things but I expect for them not to know exactly. certain things exactly but when I am you know speaking to my peers like I only didn't know one person on there and mm -hmm. it was Rich Amiri yeah. and um you know I'm gonna do my googles and find out get familiar with who he is but I was familiar with every single person on that list um I do think that it represents so like like Beyonce said People aren't making albums anymore. Mm -hmm. So clearly the rubric or the standard is going to change. So this just seems to be like, you know, people who are relevant or, you know, had hot singles or whatever. Mm -hmm. And had some moments. Yeah. And had yeah. some moments. And I would argue that there are like some other artists that had moments that could have been on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Like, um. 41. Mm -hmm. um, and there could have been a lot more female representation as well. 
because I'm not going to lie to you in the past, like since the pandemic, I can't really name too many hot male rappers Mm -hmm. as much as I can name like hot female rappers. And however we define hot is, you know, subjective, but, um, there, the girls have really been, you know, working and Mm -hmm. doing the thing. So, um, I ain't really mad. The only thing that made me raise an eyebrow was Huncho. Mm. I don't like him. Mm. Really? I don't like him. It's, it's like, why are he here? Like, <laughs> it's, why is your name Huncho? Like, you sound like somebody that we already heard. Your name is similar to somebody else who's already, like, nothing about you is original. Just go to OnlyFans already, bro. Oh, my God. Jesus Like, Christ. word. Like, I don't know. And then Southside, what was he there for? He makes the he's making the beats. Yeah, he's producing. He's like he makes he's making the beats for the freestyle. Oh, so he ain't on the cover. No, no, no. Okay, because that part confused me. All right, all right, cool, cool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Scarlet kind of made me raise my eyebrow a little bit. Like that was a very uh, like uh, yeah, they put their her on there as like yeah, like it feels like a year late, honestly. And Mm -hmm. I don't really think I can't think of anything she's dropped recently that's been like had motion. So that one was a little surprising for me. But um, no the the New York OGs love her. So they yeah. do. That's why they, I said. they really love do. her. Like a, she is like a different type of push, my yeah. boy. Yeah, like, so it's like a. I wouldn't say that she don't belong, but she's not among like the youth mm-hmm. isn't really necessarily yeah. mm-hmm. rocking mm-hmm. with her. Mm-hmm. But she got some motion. Her, her 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 fans smoke black and miles and, <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. have pensions and we're and we're black nasties. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, gangster, bro. And the beef and broccoli. Yeah, the I was best. just gonna say the beef and with broccoli. The, the shorts says like down to their ankles. Like you already know. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my mm-hmm. fucking god. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at it. I mean, it's not really anything to get mad over for me. Like I, I, I don't know. It, it is what it is at this point, and it's like I, I think they did a good job representing, you know, who, yeah, the, who are the, the hot new new acts right now. I think one thing people have to remember too is um. You don't know who turned it down. Exactly. That's the other thing. A lot of people that say no. too. A lot yeah. of people do say no. So. That too. But like, I'm, I'm happy you highlighted Lay. Cause I feel like, I like Lay, she just been like working for so long. Um, she had that P and B rock cosign mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like one of the main reasons everybody's rocking their hips. Like mm-hmm. she was a part of mm-hmm. the Philly Goats, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. She really put in that work for a long time and um, my friend came over last night for Sunday dinner with um, my niece, and then I heard her on TikTok like listening to Lay's song. Like mm-hmm. the kids love her songs, mm-hmm. so um, I'm here for her. I'm rooting for her. She got like raw talent. Yeah, so. she has immense talent. Like it's just sometimes I feel like like she has immense talent. Like I feel like she could act if she ever wants to get into that. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying, and like, she's mad pretty too. Mm-hmm. Like I remember I was working at like Charlemagne's show, and this mm-hmm. is um, pandemic time. Everyone had on a mask, but I recognized her because I was just really deep in TikTok at the time. I recognized her hair that she had that time and she had on a mask. So then they started playing. Nyla started playing um, some like hip music and she was just sitting there and I went behind her like, don't act shy, girl. You better get on up and dance. And then she turned around like, I'm like, yeah, I know who you are, girl. Get your ass up. So you want me to tell her to play a song? <laughs> but shout out to Lay. Shout out to Lay for sure. Um, we will we'll have a larger discussion about this thing, but Bobby Altoff was in Compton <laughs> with YG. Uh, <laughs> many believe that she was um, part of the Not Like Us video shoot. Don't know that for sure, but um, this was just very funny. Like, <laughs> she's mm. just funny. Don't she hate Drake too? <sighs> there's, there's. Hold on, they onto something. Them. There's apparently some. They beef might between be onto them, something. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So we will, we'll see what comes of that. But I don't know. <laughs> I, I know people were like very angry about about Bobby Altoff and how she popped out of nowhere and was getting all these big interviews. I personally find her pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. Like she's, she's not funny. You said she's not funny. No, you don't she's not like. She's like. I'm not even gonna say to like me. Anybody. She's, not, she's funny. not funny. <laughs> nah, she don't like. She don't. She don't like. She don't like. She don't think anybody's funny. She, she don't think the Avon's funny. No. She don't think. She don't think. I a lot think of you people. funny. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. That was a good counter. You, you, that was great. You like, stopped him in his tracks. Like, like, he was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Bobby's not funny. Yeah, you, yo, Will, Will has not recovered yet. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't think, 
I personally don't think she's that funny either, mm. but I see why people do think she's funny. You just a contrarian because you don't think she's funny either. <laughs> This is a contrarian. <laughs> I don't think, bro. I don't think she's. I never really sat down, like, watched her shit or be like, you know, like, yo, this is funny. Like, I've seen, like, the funny Marco thing when, like, they both do, like, the awkward, like, stares and, like. And he's not even funny to me. Neither. See, that's why I said she doesn't think anybody's funny. So, now, I just don't like that dry humor shit. Like, okay. I ain't gonna lie. I so need, that, that's what I they need be to doing. ja, ja, ja when a motherfucker crack <laughs> okay. a joke. You feel me? Like, I need to, like, ha. Like, Who's the funniest person ever to you, like comedian wise? Like ever? Not ever, but like. Because I'm about to say I'm from New York. I know a lot of funny ass motherfuckers. <laughs> you like Jamie? You like Jamie Fox? Love him. Okay, yeah, Jamie Fox was Jamie Fox is funny. Love like, him. Yeah, that's talented. one of my favorite entertainers, like yeah. all around. He's like funny as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, we'll see what comes of that. Um, but shout out to Bobby. That's my that's my milk of mag- magnesia. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's get into some new music. Um, Glorilla, new single, TGIF. I, I got I gotta give Glorilla like mm-hmm. big flowers. Yeah, mm-hmm. Glow. Mm-hmm. Last year, people were saying it was over for her. And granted, she she was dropping some shitty music. I was about to say she she was not living up to the 2022 run and mm-hmm. all the good mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. that she dropped. Mm-hmm. And Sexy Red rising up made people be like, yo, Sexy Red getting Glorilla out of here. I'm like, I don't I don't really see it that way. It's just like sexy's they both succeeding can, and they both can be here. just not dropping good music right now. She has turned things around completely. This this felt like a heat check to me. And she just hit like a half court three pointer. Like re- re- really good song. Really like TJIF. Obviously, yeah, Glow's doing really well. Wanna be with Meg Megan the Stallion is 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 cooking up. So yeah, Glow is Glow's cooking. I'm 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 very happy for her. She's, me too. She's making they're making all the right moves right now, I feel mm-hmm. like with her. Um going on tour. Um, like you said, yeah, Glow is doing doing amazing. Then this I I'm gonna steal that term too. I like that a, a heat check mm-hmm. for a song. Because yeah. Rum Punch was a heat check for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. That was a step back three. Uh-huh. Heat check, rum punch. And it, it yeah, it went in. Mm-hmm. Be- and he turned around before the shot went in. Also mm-hmm. like Steph Curry shit. Yeah. Cause Rum Punch is really the one. But back to Glow like Glow, like, they're making all the right all the right moves. I don't know if she changed up her team or like did some other shit or whatever, but yeah, it's looking good for her. I mean, Gotti knows about, you know, playing for the long term. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he knows like what to do to help her. You know, but I'm happy that she overcame that little stump because it was looking scary for it, her. It was. It was. It definitely was. But so that's what I say. Like people just got to give artists time sometimes. Like she, she got hot fast. Give yeah, people time. You know, Jesus. Like her first song. Yeah, like, yeah. went viral. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like you know some people aren't ready for that level of success, and then they maybe they they start to have hubris. They 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 think they're better than they are, and they start putting out whatever. But I think if you're ready for that type of success off rip, you're a goddamn robot. Yeah, like that's not that's. Sh- Oh, you probably just really wanted it. Yeah, too. that too. Yeah. You could have been training your whole life, mm-hmm. and you're in the mirror, mm-hmm. singing in the shower, just ready, ready, mm-hmm. ready. But you know, in her case, I feel like, you know, yeah, something happened fast and went, and went viral. You know what I'm saying? She got new teeth, new titty. You know what I'm saying? She, <laughs> she's locked. Like she just it took, for real. It, it took a while to lock in. It just yeah. takes a while to. It takes a while to get into that into that mode. Okay, like boom, I'm like a star. Like. I got to do this. I got to do that. But I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Like, most people are not ready for that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard. Nah, TGIF, though. That's a hard, that's a record. Sorry. Yeah, because it was really 95 degrees on mm-hmm. 7 p.m. on Friday mm-hmm. last and, week. <laughs> and, like, I think we talked about it last time. The song been going so crazy on TikTok. We thought it was, I thought it was out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was out. I thought yeah. it was out. And when she said I'm out, dropping it, like, I was like, oh, wow. That's yeah. like an explosion. Whenever yeah. that happens. That's what that's what I mean. Like that's what happened to for sure. Honestly, people, a lot of people thought that shit was out. Mm-hmm. It was you know the little the little snippet TikTok shit was just going crazy, and then once it dropped, it was like the it was like the the, the atom bomb dropping because it was like oh it's all bubbling down there that drops. It's like it's like it's like it's like gas hitting the fire. Yeah, and it was just yeah. So shout out to TikTok. It's that's a, when TikTok is fire. Yeah, it's a powerful tool. Powerful tool. Uh, someone who is not making the best moves right now. Ice Spice dropped fat butt. Say, say it one more time. Fat butt. <laughs> and this, it's kind of aptly named. Hell um, no. Here's the thing. Hell no. On this show, I have been a loud, proud Munch Militia member. Um, I 
I fuck with Ice Spice heavily. These last few singles have not been it at all. Give me the light. Turn, turn, turn the light off. Um, Please. To think you the shit fart, it, it, it was shit. The fat butt. At least her, she's she's trying a, a different flow, which I like. Yeah, they saying she stole Nikki flow. Yeah, she didn't steal another one because this one working. Yeah, that the the flow was cool, <laughs> but she keeps like bragging about how she doesn't have a ghostwriter, but her bars are like not good. Like it's very basic, very elementary level. So I'm like, yo, honestly, should you get one? maybe you should work with a writer, uh, like uh, like. Yo, well, you, you you remember that um that clip of uh, Rory talking about how uh, Ice Spice was on the clock? Mm-hmm. It was like right after she dropped Delhi, mm-hmm. and like we were like, yo, it's weird to put an artist who hasn't even been out for a year mm-hmm. on the clock. Mm-hmm. It's almost two years since like she you know burst onto the scene with Munch, and I, I need to see the product elevate. Like it's it's it stayed here. Like I don't I don't want to listen to any of this shit. It's 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 concerning, honestly. Like I'm I'm not looking forward to this album based off of the singles that I've heard. I'm, of course, I'm gonna give oh, it a man. chance, but man, I mean, bro, I I remember I was in the studio with um somebody from you know from her team, um, and they pretty much told me this album. And I, I think I mean you told me say this mm-hmm. this album. What she's about to try to do is people are either gonna love it or hate it, mm-hmm. and right now. It's looking like people are hating. Yeah. And, you know, taking that risk as an artist, you know, I thought it was about to be some, like, opium shit. Just to be like, <laughs> people were like, just the way, like, people was like, yeah, it's going to be opium. She's wearing, like, black and upside down crosses and shit. It's like, I don't know if it's going to be that. I just think, you know, like you said, she keeps mentioning about the about the Ghost Rider stuff and this and that. I feel like she's trying to prove a point. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to prove a point, make sure that point is right. Yeah. Because if it's not right and you're going to try to prove this point, of like, oh, I don't need a writer and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, everybody's not good at everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody's everybody's not a 99 overall on everything that they do. Yeah. Like, so if you need help on that stuff, you need help on that stuff. You know, I think that second cover she just dropped, I liked a lot. Same. I thought I thought it was, I thought that one was, okay, mm-hmm. this is, That's this is one. cool. This is like fire. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, that's much better. Yeah, Actually, that's that's I'm, the I'm, one. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing it for the first time. Yeah. That's much better. Much better. Yeah. That looks like it's give debut mm-hmm. album. That yeah. gives excite. That gave me a little bit of excitement. Yeah, like a little bit. Okay, I was like, like, all right, this is cool. Um, Y'all know YouTuber Armand Wiggins. <laughs> yes, uh, because you know people. Whenever people are tweeting about him, I'm like, wait, what the fuck did I do? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, 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 I, I ain't do shit. What's going on? I'm like, what oh, it's about Armand Wiggins. Got it. <laughs> Armand basically cocked some tea. Basically, he thinks that Ice Spice and Nikki are not on the best of terms right now. Mm. And that, like, that alternate cover was like a jab at Nikki because, you know, she had like the Gag City theme cover yeah. and she was like inside of a train. And now Ice's um, covers her, like, you know, towering over a train Mm -hmm. in, like, some real nutty professor fashion. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I do like this cover a lot more better. I don't understand intentionally putting the title on the trash can. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I and think. then to lean into it and be like, "Oh, we did that on purpose." Yeah. Don't, uh, you're a liar. Don't admit that. You're a liar. <laughs> she's leaning in a lot. And you're bro, a liar right now. She's leaning in on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Just the way she's even promoting, you can like it feels like she's pressing. It feels heat, like it's, what it's, what it's you call it? Press. Heat check. Heat check. Yeah. It's mad heat checks going on mm-hmm. with this shit, and mm-hmm. like even piggybacking on the point that you said about her highlighting the fact that she doesn't use writers and stuff. Like you know, she is still actively beefing with every single person that Nikki has beef with, (laughs) including Lotto. And, like, as much as I'm here for, like, you know, like, the friendly competition and the rivalry, I'm like, wait, you really think you're better than Lotto? (laughs) Like, don't make me say anything like that on this damn podcast because I defend New York artists, like, if I'm on their motherfucking payroll. (laughs) But we've been seeing Lotto since she had those braces when she was begging her dad to curse Mm -hmm. in, in her rap songs. And... That girl has been putting in a lot of work. She can she's rap. Super, she, she can rap. She, she's like that. She can rap. She can rap. She's like that. So it's like, I don't understand where Isis is really going with this. Um, A lot of things don't make sense to me. And as much as I love Onika, it really went to shits when they connected. Because like, why did you sign to Heavy on it? What did that do for you or your career? Are you still signed to Heavy on it? 
Um, why did you start beefing with Lotto mm-hmm. out of nowhere? You know, and then uh, please, she can please spare us with the couple content, boo. <laughs> we don't care about what you and Riot is doing. <laughs> spare us with the couple content. I seen that video and rolled my eyes like child. Y'all look like the typical boring Spanish couple from the what, New what York video? public high school, bro. What video? It was a video with them just like standing there, and then they was just like you know like voiceover. It was it's on TikTok. Oh wow. And they just did voiceovers. And I'm like, girl, it's like, I already see what she's trying to do. Like, the music not hitting. So now she's trying to, like, you know, give us little peeks into her personal life when she's clearly notoriously private. And it's just not going to work at this point, especially because, you know, I don't I don't think so. But everyone questions Riot's sexuality. And then she goes online saying, oh, he don't like boys. And then everyone's like, wow, so that's your man. And like. I don't get it. She don't. It's it's too much going on and not go. Not a lot going on mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> a bar. It's a bar. But um, yeah, yeah. I I hope that she proves me wrong with this album. But going into it, I'm not. not <laughs> yeah, I, it's 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 hard to believe that she will. It is. Hang it up. Shit is not hidden. Shit is not hidden at all. And it's it's funny too because like I was one of the people who would like defend her you know people people said like by like december of this year it will be over for her and i'm like i don't know about that like nah, no way like her backing i feel like her her energy what backing like just like the the like machine behind her mm. like the fact she's getting all the all these huge looks mm. um all that like I, I don't know i felt like it'd be hard for her to fail but the music is the the number one thing and she hasn't been delivering so so people might end up being right. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But um, another song that disappointed me, Mustard and Travis Scott, Parking Lot. I When I saw Travis Scott was on this shit, I almost threw my phone. I am so tired of Travis Scott. I'm, High key. I am exhausted. High key. Exhausted. As an artist, yes. I'm like, tired of him. Like, bruh, the nigga adds nothing <clears throat> to any music that he is on. The most empty vibe versus like it's uh, fucking annoying and it was a really good mustard beat too like really good beat i uh, i was in the group chat saying like i felt like mustard had a layup here in adding a west coast artist to that song there's a lot of momentum behind mustard right now (sighs) not like us is cooking crazy but then you think about it, you're like, well, who on who on the West Coast right now? Roddy Rich is not hot. I'm gonna say Roddy Rich need a lifeline right now. Yeah, they could do it. But I, I feel like I feel like people are just like kind of over Roddy. Like he's he's really All been he trying. Needs is a hit. He's he, he hasn't made one since like what 2020. It's I been think a minute. his personal life is over. Is is like getting too involved. All he needs is a hit. He know how to play the piano and shit. Like I'm sorry, no, no, no. extremely talented guy. I can't write him off yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I get it. I don't I don't want to either, but I can't do it. Yeah, I don't know. Him, Blast, you could have put on that song. Ty Dolla Sign. Yo, Ty um, Dolla Sign. Tyga even, hear me out. Tyga would have snapped That's on that That's a certified beat. hit maker. T- t- Tyga stay with a hit. Like, certified hit maker. Every year, every other year, Tyga give us one. So I get it, Mustard. Travis Scott is a huge name for your lead single, for your album. You want, you know, the most visibility and push possible. But niggas got to please stop putting Travis Scott on songs. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop. Like, Mustard should have just released that beat on its own with no no artist rather than putting Travis on that shit. I don't want to be on. fake because I really used to love Travis Scott a Me lot. Too. Like, during, Everybody like, did. the rodeo era. Me too. Everybody but did. nothing was the same after that for mm-hmm. me. Like, I remember this dude took me on a date to see him at Gramercy Theater. That's when him and Rihanna were still an item. Mm. And, like, I just had, like, the best day ever. And then, I don't know. I don't know what caused a shift for me like it was like around the time he got with kylie honestly <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh he just nothing has done it for me since Astro World. like the, the, the way niggas try to defend utopia made me angry i was like yo this is a bad album this is bad people like we gotta be honest yeah that that shit was bad yeah like it <sighs> yeah very annoying so i only listen to it for this shit <laughs> I was like, I'm not forcing me to listen to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly would not have played this song if I didn't have to cover it for work and and for the pod, but yeah. 
piss me off. So mm-hmm. hope Mustard links up with some some West Coast artists on uh, the rest of the album. Um, lastly, Kehlani Crash. I'm not gonna cap to y'all. I didn't finish the album. I couldn't finish the album. I love Kehlani though, and you know what? O- also, yeah. As like, soon as we got to eight, I said, nah, Armand, I'm sorry. I'm going to go on this podcast. I'm like, yo, I ain't listen to this whole shit. Fuck that shit. I couldn't. It was hard. Yeah. It, the, everybody in their country era, everybody blending genre. It's, girl, I need a theme. The The first couple songs were, were cool to me. <laughs> I but need a theme. Yeah. It, it, I, I was listening to it in the shower, and I was like, this isn't connecting for me like, like, a, like I would like it to. And like, I'm a big Kehlani fan. Like, I've, I've, I've been a fan for years. I really fuck with her. But, yeah, I don't know. It just it it didn't really do it for me, so I I, I couldn't finish the album. I, I I will be responsible and go and make myself finish it, but it wasn't something that like I I, I stopped playing. I was like, damn, like, I I I want to finish this. I so. mean, shout out to her for saying free Palestine weeks before her album dropped. Yeah. Because she needed the promo oh, wow. and the shock value. Like, okay. shout out to her for saying it Holy for the shit. first time because it's been going Holy on since last shit. summer and she only mentioned it Holy right before the album. Shit. But that shit still didn't make me want to listen to it. I'm sorry. Holy man. shit. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. yeah um, I couldn't get through it. And also, <laughs> not really fucking with Kalani right now because... What's she did? You want me to be hot? No. Nah. Have y'all heard that, that one song, that Kalani freestyle shit? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Niggas, niggas use. Uh, they couldn't get a cash beat, so they made a fake cash beat, mm. and uh, yeah, we just been dealing with that and kind of nasty. And now she's hopped on the remix and this and that. It's like, yo, mm. y'all could have just came to the source, mm. and y'all we're making fake cash. But beats you said and, they couldn't get one, so did you mean, deny no, them? No, it's not. It's not. It's a little bit more to that than not being denied. But uh, yeah, bro. Just a fake cash beat. Mm. Nigga said, so I don't fuck with Kaylani because the name of the song. <laughs> she's it's named after her. So fuck her. <laughs> nah, she's hopping on the remix. Yeah, she is. But she needs the moment. She's saying free Palestine. She hopping on a, a TikTok trendy song. Like she need it, bro. It's crazy too, because I actually really like um her single uh After Hours where she samples um Boo, I don't like no yeah, yeah, no like no it. no. If you sample a song that's already a hit, you need something else. <laughs> If the, if the song that you're sampling is already a mega hit, mm-hmm. you need something else. Mm-hmm. That's like Koi Ray doing uh, Players. No. You need another one. I can't believe Players blew up like that the way it did. Kind of nuts. It's a hit. It's, it samples a hit already. Mm-hmm. A, a timeless hit that people play in movies and shit still. So and that, that's a cheat code. No. Yeah. So it's crazy how crazy how much she cooled off after that bro yeah i was, I was literally about to say yo she's been, she been pretty quiet she cooled off and she like crazy randomly drops that. singles like pretty often but yeah she dropped a lot of stuff mm, after playing no talking, but nothing, talking about her not yeah i think the drama like with her dad mm. and like you know it's just so many other female artists out now too and they all don't like each other so it's like I don't know, but I'm not going to single her out because even down to that XXL freshman class list, I'm, as much as I think they got it right, I don't think there's outside of cash. I don't think that there's anyone on there that's really like pushing the culture. Mm. I think that everyone there is doing great things at the moment and there's room for great things to happen. And, you know, they can be developed. But, yeah, I won't single her out. It's the same across the board. I'm bored. Mm-hmm. Where the the most exciting thing that happened is Drake and Kendrick, and they came out when we were in high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I'll let y'all know if I get back to a Kalani crash. Um. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I ain't gonna lie. And in that Planet Her inspired cover, <laughs> it was a lot going on, man. I'm good on it. Oh, uh, let's get into our lunch break. So the NBA Finals came to a close. None of my parlays hit. Thanks, Armand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I really thought I had one. But um, Boston Celtics won the NBA Finals in five games. Jalen Brown was named NBA Finals MVP. Um, Jason Tatum, uh, the day of the parade in Boston, said that uh, his trips to play the Miami Heat are always easy. And that was just funny to me. It's like, bro, you, you, you just want a ring. So, of course, talk your shit. Talk heavy. Lie even. But, bro. 2022 and 2023, we saw y'all have back-to-back seven-game series with Miami. So, them trips is not easy. M- Miami had y'all in the fucking camel clutch in, um, in, tw- in 2022, 2023, tw- last year, 2023. Um, so, that was funny. But 
Shout out to the Celtics. Um, I, I feel vindicated because the entire season I was saying that they were a super team. Um, and they 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 proved me right. Um, Jalen Brown getting Finals MVP was uh pretty interesting. You know, a lot of people thought Tatum was bad about that. I really don't think he is. Um, but Jalen Brown stepped up big time. You know, the the narrative about him for a while was he has no left hand. He he would get critiqued very very heavily. Um, but came away with the Finals MVP. So shout out to him for that. Um, happy to see Porzingis get one. Derek White, I fuck with. So happy for him too. Drew Holiday, I fuck with. So good to see him win. Um, yeah, the NBA's, uh, gone until October, so it's just me, dub- the WNBA and baseball now, and wrestling, Aww. wrestling always holds me down. Uh, I can't wait for football to come back. That's gonna be, that's gonna be lit. Um, Olympics, Shikari Richardson qualified for the 2024 Paris Olympics after winning the 100 meter dash, um, at the, the best track in the world. trials. Shout out to Shikari. Best in the world. Amazing. Yeah. Shout out to her. Mm-hmm. It sucks that, like, you know, when she first got um, disqualified, when they found the weed in the system, that shit was all over everywhere. And mm-hmm. I don't really see much coverage of this. So I'm happy to speak on it and give Shikari her flowers because mm-hmm. she's really been, like, doing the damn thing. And I'm, I'm, I was a young black girl with an attitude and <laughs> the weight of the world on my shoulders. So... Sometimes you need that critique to just sharpen you up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not always... Um, it, they do be dragging you, mm-hmm. but it's not always meant to be a drag. Mm-hmm. So, shout out to her. Yeah, absolutely. Super dope. Can't wait for the Olympics. It's always an exciting time of year. So, shout out to her. Um, let's jump into this board meeting. So, there was a concert that happened last week. Um, Kendrick Lamar's The Pop Out. It was streamed on Amazon um, and Twitch. Um, and obviously it took place at the, at the forum. Um, and it was dope. It was dope. I, w- I was at a Juneteenth cookout that day, uh, drinking a lot of rum punch. I was, I was drunk. I was like, oh shit, the concert's on. So I turned it on. I caught mustard set. Um, he brought out like Tyler and Steve Lacey and a bunch of people. And that was cool. And I watched Kendrick perform. Gotta say, man, it's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. I was I, wondering I, how you felt. I, I wanted to hate. I know you did. I, I I wanted to hate big time, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I I I played not like us an insane amount of times this weekend. I'm not going for it's. It is such an undeniably good song. It, it pisses me off how how good it is. Yeah. Like it's insane. The so, hook is so crazy, bro. Yeah. And it's not that complex. Mm-hmm. It's simple. It's the simplicity of it, and the simplicity of it is so powerful. Mm-hmm and such straight to the point and it's such a i'm with my nigga song mm-hmm. there's just it's, so it's many perfect, quotables bro. too it's perfect bro. honestly it's so perfect, bro. many quotables it's like, perfect bro the way he blends it's perfect rapping his ass off but also making it catchy it's perfect. Not, not a lot of niggas who could do that yeah and, bro yeah bro just like the clips and just like seeing I, I still need to watch the full concert. I haven't watched the full concert. I just, you know, caught. Oh, I forced my company to watch it. Caught shit. <laughs> and this all. And that. Like, <laughs> the, the, like, the fact, like, that one clip where he's like, you know, everybody's on stage. He's going through. He's rapping it. And, you know, he's he's rapping. He's dapping niggas up. And he's like, it's just crazy. He's like, say Drake. And he like dapping niggas up. Like, he's really dissing this nigga mm-hmm. on stage with all his niggas. Russell Westbrook and DeMar DeRozan are crip rocking. That and like took shit is crazy, out. bro. <laughs> like shit is crazy. And this niggas and like I seen I seen Joe say this on his pod. Like yo, this is the first time we seen Kendrick with a goddamn taper shape up and some <laughs> yo, and, and jewelry and, and, some, and like a fat ass, nigga. What that cross was so fat, boy. Mm-hmm. That's some nigga. That shit is heavy, boy. Like mm-hmm. for real. Like for real. Now Eliante dropped just dropped the chain that he um the new chain. People are seeing that and. People are seeing the video shoot the other day. It's just like, people are like, oh my God, like we didn't even know he was like this. Mm-hmm. Did y'all peep the lyric change too? Yeah. 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 And I was like, yo, he really want Pac bring back. Give it back, Dre. <laughs> just give it to him. You don't even want it. Do not melt that shit, son. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. Um It was crazy. Man. The comments. The commentary, the <laughs> feedback. It'd be the best part after a cultural yeah. moment as well, too, because then you really can gauge like 
the different POVs mm-hmm. and like when you're assessing the same situation, like, oh, that's mm-hmm. what you got out of that? And like, you know, I see academics online saying that um, he's being applauded for uniting the West, but mm-hmm. he's saying what he really did was unite gang members. Mm-hmm. And while academics definitely did eat with that point, I think that's the point. And that's what makes the moment so special. Like, I saw a tweet that said, LA seeds fire before Israel. Mm. It's like, Drake questioned Kendrick's gang affiliation. Mm. He ca- he questioned how much his hood loves him. Mm. And <sighs> he really popped out and showed niggas, yeah. like, real talk. And Steve Lacey surprised the mm. shit out of me. <laughs> I wish I knew, because, word, <laughs> like... <laughs> That shit, I was like, wait, who's that in the pro? <laughs> is this? <laughs> no, it was a moment. Um, Tommy the Clown, that was my favorite. That was funny. That Crump era used to have me in a chokehold because it was like simultaneous with Chris Brown's debut as well. So it was like mm-hmm. a whole moment. But um, yeah, shout out to the West Coast. You know what was so insufferable when people kept comparing the locks and um, dip set verses yeah. to that? Yeah. I'm like, why? Y'all. People were doing that? Yeah, they were. They claim different coasts, same energy. And I'm just like, um, hold on now. It's two incomparable situations. Mm-hmm. Like, Versus was a matchup for two New York groups, and they went toe to toe as opposed to um, Ken and Friends. That was like what Drake did at the OVO Fest when he did the... Back the back. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I was there. Like, that video mm. that everyone reported on us <laughs> from my phone. Mm. Yeah. That's that's the moment that solidified my career, Talking too. Talking shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was there. It was crazy to see people rapping the words to Euphoria. Because I think that, that song, like, gets kind of swept under the rug in the face of Not Like Us yes. and Family Matters. Yes. But like Meet you're, the Grams. You're, yeah, Meet the Grams. But you're seeing people, like giving flowers to euphoria I and euphoria. 616 in in la now like some people call that the best song uh, of the beef um but yeah it was, it was just crazy to see people like niggas new new euphoria and it's like a, what a six minute seven minute song like <laughs> n- niggas niggas knew them lyrics yeah. so it was very it was very impressive uh, it was cool to see j-rock pop out to do money trees yeah mm. Mm. How the do whole y'all... Black Hippies. It was a little reunion. Yeah, like yeah, It yeah. was like, wow, I feel like a kid right now. Yeah. And I also realized that I don't really dislike Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't like he called himself the king of New York on mm, that controller. That, that was nuts. That was nuts. That and I think that's anymore. when I disassociated myself from uh-huh. him. Mm-hmm. But as he's performing, I'm like, damn, my dad fuck with every single <laughs> thing. Yeah, I'm a fraud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did y'all feel about... So his whole thing has been calling out Drake for being a freaky ass nigga and pedophilia and all that. And a colonizer. Yeah, and a colonizer. And then he brings out Dr. Dre, who we know has allegations, several mm-hmm. allegations. Do you feel like that was contradictory? Did that ruin anything? Like it it's 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 interesting. Like because uh, I saw my, my homegirl Caitlin, she wrote an article on it for Teen Vogue talking about how like you know kendrick is what the culture is feeling and he's he like took the culture on his back in this beef but then he's giving dr dre his allegations a platform Mm -hmm. so it kind of like watered down what he was seeking to achieve niggas be misogynist yo they do they only talk that talk because it sound good but at the end of the day they don't give a fuck about women and kids for real like, and trust and believe if something happened like this in New York, niggas is bringing Diddy out. So we got to start the industry from scratch. We have to start it from scratch. There was a lot of things that was acceptable during a certain time that is just not acceptable anymore. And a lot of our faves and OGs engaged and were partaking in the bullshit. So, yeah, when I saw Dr. Dre come out, I definitely thought, you know, why is he around? Mm -hmm. And then when he's whispered, I see dead people. I said, nah, it sounds scary as fuck when you (laughs) say it, nigga. Don't ever say that shit again. (laughs) But um, that's what, like, that's why in the beef, that's why I, that's the part of the beef that I agree with Drake on. Like, you are a fake activist. Mm. 
that audience had majority of white people. Their fan base is ma- is majority whites. You have a biracial wife or fiance, baby mother. And um, yeah, bro, like you don't like, I don't know. I don't know. Unless you out here fucking shooting cops that's fucking abusing their authority on some Tupac <laughs> shit, nigga, you ain't real right. I don't care. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting, but I think you know the the thing with Ken and people called this out in the middle of the beef too. It's like Kendrick had a lot of different points he made and things he did that should have, you know, lost him points. But he's so revered, and he was taking down Drake, who niggas hate. So niggas overlooked a lot of his bullshit, but like a lot of contradictory moments and um, you know, things that somebody else would have gotten who called out on. Drake? A lot of people. I don't think enough people hate him for for people to be saying that or for that to be a narrative. People, I was like, that was probably the one of the biggest like surprises for me was seeing so many niggas come out the woodwork and really celebrate Drake's downfall during the beef and like with this concert, like it shocked me because. And granted, we we talked about it too. It's like people are kind of tired of him. You know, he's been super present throughout his entire career, never really given us a break from from himself. Uh, but I'm like, yo, like at the end of the day, like everyone has a favorite Drake song or, or favorite Drake song. Like, he, Absolutely. like he's guaranteed to you play him and like you, your party's gonna get turned up. So, but that's what Kendrick's saying. Mm-hmm. Stick with the melodies. Stop trying to act tough mm-hmm. because I'm gonna call the crodies on you and we gonna really show you. Yeah. So yeah, all points are made. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I I I thought the pop out was was dope. Really dope. Um, can't hate on it. As, as much as I want to, as much as I tried to. Um, doing the song five times was just like... I loved it. Yeah. Like, every time. And you know I crumped every time? <laughs> like, you know I crip walked and crumped in my crib every single time he started? <laughs> Especially when, when niggas held the... Uh, held the, uh, the minor. Yeah, for like 30 seconds. And yeah, then did the crazy. hotline it, bling it, dance. Yeah, it, it was genius too. Like completely c- cutting the audio and just standing there dancing and like no doing Drake's dance. Yeah, yeah, doing Drake's dance and like the fact that the crowd knew to just hold it, like keep going. It was, it was. Nah, insane. he hates them. It was. Insane. It was funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> he hates them. Yeah, yeah, and I felt that because I hate a couple bitches the same fucking way. So <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. he hates them. And <laughs> seeing the way Mustard so aggressively rapped the song Yo, into the camera, like Mustard, do not fuck with Drake. Said, I'm not neutral, nigga. Why? <laughs> he was in. He yeah. was hitting that shit. He was in his bag. He was in his bag. It was a bag. He said, "I'm not neutral." Yeah, it's the West Coast, nigga. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty crazy. Nah, that was funny as fuck. Shout out to Mustard. Uh, some people are saying that uh, "Not Like Us" is. The greatest diss song ever. No, it's not. No. No. Well, how, how, how do you feel? Mm. No. Nah. No. Yeah. What does it need to to get to that point? I need to say somebody gotta die. I was about to say he gotta get more disrespectful. Somebody gotta. Somebody gotta. Somebody gotta pass. I think Pac and Ice Cube got it for like the best diss tracks. I really like "What's Beef" by Biggie though. That shit is that shit is sinister. That shit is shit. Like I'm listening to somebody like take the body out back and <laughs> chop it up and, and put it in. I really like that, but yeah, Pac. Yeah, Pac got it. Like that ending when he was cutting up oh about God. Prodigy sick of selling shit. I was like, oh my god, this, this nigga's sick. <laughs> This you sick of that? This nigga is this nigga is nuts. <laughs> yeah, and even connecting that to the um Fulio shit, like mm-hmm. everybody who does that dies. Yep. Like it's not good energy. So yeah, someone gotta die. So if 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 it wins a Grammy, does that does that add anything for y'all? That'd that cool. adds to the the joke that Drake said. Because mm. <laughs> that is not a mouth. yeah, that's not a Grammy worthy <laughs> song. That just adds to the shit. Like he really does have too many Grammys for no reason, bro. Mm. But like I said, both I'm a hip hop fan, and that would be crazy. I enjoy both. Oh, it's definitely winning the Grammy. It, it, it's, anytime it's, he opens his mouth, he wins one. It, it, I, I I think that's winning. <laughs> that's winning best rap performance. I think like that is going to be best rap collab and. Euphoria is probably going to be best rap song. Like Kendrick mm. sweeping the Grammys without mm. an album out is going to be pretty mm. nuts. Mm. And then you nuts. know Drake got beef with the Recording Academy. Yeah. yeah. 
All so, the little young money kids do. Yeah. Like, it's over. Yeah. Um, concert wise, like the rankings of the greatest concerts ever. Where, where does this fall for you, for y'all? I never saw Michael Jackson perform. Mm, me neither. So I can't rank it. Mm. I did see Beyonce last year though. I never saw Michael Jackson. Did did that tell you guys the story of how I ended up spending mad money on on the Renaissance tour? You did. I did. Okay. Oh, you told me. Well, you know the tea. Oh, you didn't hear. Okay, so (laughs) my boy, shout out to him, Shep. Love you, bro. Um, he tells me that his sister is selling Beyonce tickets. Um, he sends me a screenshot that says like she sold. She was selling them for like $100 each. I was like, this is insane. Like, I know how expensive these tickets were. There's no way she's selling these for 100 But I believed him. So it's like two <laughs> days, two days. Right. <laughs> like, but like, I believed him. Bro, it's, it's two <laughs> right. days before I, I'm... You know he fucked up. Mm-hmm. Bro, I was, oh my God. Like, I, 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 I really should have thought critically about the situation. I was like, hey, she, but she was in love. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you wanted to do something special. Right. So two days before I'm, I'm about to pay... Cover the tab. Right, yeah, <laughs> j- j- just hers. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's two days before I'm about to pay the dude's sister for the tickets. He hits me up. He's like, "Yo, I'm stupid." I'm like, "What do you mean?" Yes, you he's are. like, "The um, the the number I gave you was the processing fee." I was like, "Okay, so how much are, are the tickets actually? Thirteen hundred each. Each. Yeah. So I spent twenty six hundred dollars on Beyonce tickets. Granted, the seats were amazing. I was right next to the stage." It was an anniversary gift for me and my ex. So mm-hmm. worth it. You know, worth it. Sp- spend money on experiences. I love Beyonce. Worth mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I-, I went from thinking I was going to spend like $300, dollars Beyonce tickets bands. to spending $2,600. On it. And then you factor in the, the expensive ass drinks at MetLife, the, the Uber there, mm. the expensive Uber you got to take to leave because getting a ride back is hell. And then like those dudes with, with the fake third party Uber apps. Oh charge you one hundred eighty dollars to drive you twenty minutes. Like, oh my god! Yeah, bro. they be making a killing. Yeah, they do. That they sounds do. rough, Armand. It was rough. It was rough. Worth it though. I'm I'm glad you that you spent like three. You spent like three k, gang. I spent a lot. Nah, though. for real. I spent a lot. You spent like. 3K. You might as well have just took it a dinner and paper every day. <laughs> Pay for everybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you bring a joke full circle, <laughs> bro. But, god damn, boy. Yeah. God. But damn. Beyonce's definitely one of the like. I saw her on the on the Run Two tour and Renaissance tour, both incredible. So yeah, I would I would put those up there for myself. Um, and people aren't performers, performers these days. Mm-hmm. So like, like I, I've been seeing Chris Brown every year since I was fourteen. I, I only still, didn't still see him in twenty twenty for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But um, now Kendrick did put on a great show. Mm-hmm. He was sweating bullets. He ain't even zip the, the zip it down a little <laughs> bit. He ain't doing none of that. You know, he was skipping certain words mm-hmm. to make sure that he still had enough press. Like, everything was fire. Like, I really fucked with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably it. I, I wouldn't say it's the greatest I've ever seen, but it was pretty good. I, I, I'd put it up there. Is Are we talking about greatest, like, we've seen in our person or just, like, greatest concert we ever Both. watched or ever seen? Because, you know, I watch a lot of concerts on YouTube and yeah. stuff and right. like, nuts, stuff like that. Because that Michael Jackson should be looking crazy. Yeah, Michael Jackson's, uh, yeah, Michael Jackson's are up there. I think, obviously, everybody remembers fucking DMX at the the World or whatever. What was that? Was that the when World had AIDS? had the jumpsuit. Was that the World AIDS I don't even thing? know where or, he was. Oh, no, that was Woodstock. That was, like, the, mm. like, that was the 99 Woodstock or whatever. Um, yeah, that shit looked crazy. Um, yeah, I th- Kendrick's Kendrick's is up there. Kendrick's is up there for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it might be like top, maybe top ten all time, mm. concert wise. What I think it is now, performers now they use so many back vocals and yes. they're just so underwhelming. So to see someone who is you know a legend already still performing so well we were just like wow like we were really impressed in the memes i can't lie gunners tour oh yeah the, the show we went to. Yeah. you went you went there yeah, yeah. that shit At, uh, was but Barclays. amazing yeah. incredible i was incredible. like this nigga's not taking he's not taking bro, breaks he, he he's not drinking water bro. he's not doing this. like bro it was like a real like i was like damn nigga he's he's he's, he's come a long way as a performer like, I, I saw him a few times in like 2018 i was yeah. like i like these songs i like gunna but mm-hmm. the performance isn't moving me like that but. and the set design was amazing yeah. amazing I, like i was glued to the set i, I mm-hmm. barely recorded on my phone because mm-hmm. i just wanted yeah, to see what was going yeah. on yeah i was locked in yeah was locked in. that was a good ass year bro 
Yeah. That's one. Drake kind of pissed me off on his tour. He was. He, I didn't go. It's it's like glorified karaoke now. Like he spends a lot of time pointing the mic at the fans, letting niggas sing the songs, and like you know you like the song, so it's fine. But it's like nigga perform. Like he he performed more when I saw him in Toronto. The Apollo show was was obviously more. Of a I was about to say the Apollo show. I cried. That was fire. It was fire. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was shit, cheering up too, but I was. Good. I was I was I was. I was, I was so I think I think I was a little emotional, but yeah. Like I said, I think I was a little emotional. I I, I definitely teared up at that. No, yeah, I, I like I, that. My eyes started watering. I was like, "Yo, son, this really." I've been tapped in with this nigga since replacement girl. This is crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah but nah, his tour made me angry. But I'll, I'll always have Apollo, and his, his Dreamville joint was good too. Um, but yeah, yeah. So shout out to Kendrick. Pop out was really good. Um, I hope he drops an album because that's the thing, like. Kendrick fans are so they're so happy right now. They're they're so well fed. I'm just like this is going to disappear again for like three years. What y'all gonna do? You gonna be asking for some new Drake? I, I bet. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if he might disappear. He's he hasn't been predictable. Mm. We did not expect an EP worth of songs. Yeah. We didn't even expect this back and forth. So to be honest, I think we could expect the unexpected. We'll see. I seen someone say that these songs are doing so well that he won't even have to drop an LP, but I still think he's going to. But the question is, is it going to be all new songs mm-hmm. or is it going to be like two new songs and then the rest of the, like these like this, like, you know, the rest mm-hmm. of the, but I don't, I, like, I, Kendrick's more taste, t- Kendrick, Dave Free and PG Lang is, Way more tasteful than that, and they OGs, I mean, and they, that's some new artist shit. Yeah, and they, I feel like they won't. I feel like if he's gonna drop, it's gonna be all new songs, yeah. and it's not even gonna be on the vibe. This, that's what might piss people off. It's not on the vibe of what they've kind of been receiving. Yeah, a little bit. yes. If he comes back and it's on some like <laughs> free and the slave, free the slave type <laughs> shit, <laughs> niggas shit. are gonna be <laughs> niggas are gonna be sick. Monty bro. is a man now. They're like, nah, keep that chain on your neck. And niggas gonna, yeah, bro, niggas gonna be like, yeah, yeah, well. You know, he did give us this and that. It's like, nah, he went right back to freeing the slaves. But mm-hmm. he might not, bro. I don't know. You know. I'm excited to see. Like, yeah. I think we can expect the unexpected. Mm. We'll see. We'll have to see. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first ever podcast episode that I recorded leading into my birthday. I had, had a great time with you all. I enjoyed you all. No matter what hour of the day you listen to this, pour up a drink. Have one for me. 29 years of life. The road to 30 begins. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it, you know. Got yeah. great people. Thank you yeah. for my team. Happy um, birthday, Armand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Um, appreciate the listeners, of course. Happy birthday, um, my boy. Thank you, brother. Appreciate those who popped out to my party this past weekend. If you couldn't be there, it's okay. It's all love. Uh, you could just cash out me $100. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah, more, more life. More greatness to come for all of us. Um, and I'm just I'm grateful to be here. So thank y'all. And um, for myself, for Miss Two Bs, for Will, we want you to stay safe, stay humble, and of course, stay busy.